Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Lin of Rehab and Revive Physical Therapy. We have Stephanie here as a continued guest. Uh, hopefully you checked her high heel video and uh, you saw that I kind of pointed out things in her hip and, and her foot ankle. So we want to see, I want it was really bothering me. I wanted to get her in and, and uh, get her some help. Uh, she noticed she noticed some pain. So why don't we tell the public a little bit more of, of what's going on and, uh, and uh, you know, what's been going on and how long has it been going on, so. Um, so I feel like one time I slept a weird way or slept in a different, like on a different surface, so it was softer. Um, and then when I woke up, I had some pain like in my left hip back region. Um, and I noticed when I walk, uh, sometimes it's just like sharp pain. Okay. Um, sometimes it's like just it's a dull, dull pain. aching okay. pain. Um, and yeah, and sometimes it goes down like oh, to my really? Hip, so. Yeah, so that's those are those are uh, quite a bit of symptoms uh, going on. Some of you at home might experience something like this, especially if you go to a hotel that's not very good or on a mattress um, at, a, at, a, at a you know guest room. Um, so yeah, we're gonna figure out uh, what what's uh, important to you for for me to help you address. But um, I would say, well, how do you feel when you're walking? Because I think that's something that just stood out quite a yeah. bit, like the ability to perform uh, in walking. Sometimes unstable, like when I'm walking, I'll just trip over my own leg <laughs> um, really? Really? not not like a lot but just i feel it like buckle a little bit so weak i guess and uh do you feel um so you buckled like you said um and then do you feel connected to that side as much since um, this this little injury i guess less connected yeah. than my right side which is yeah, yeah. So and I'm sure it's affecting all your other things i know you like to work out um mm -hmm. you know a couple other things is this affecting your sitting Yes. Sleeping. So oh, sleeping. sitting for long periods of time definitely, like in school and class, hurt. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, sleeping. Sleeping isn't so bad. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, things like you know sounds like something with the hip. You know, if you're gonna sit. Uh, so uh, we're gonna go through uh, some some little instances. Watch her walk again, uh, and then check out some functional tests uh, that I've learned, uh, and then uh, also you know see if we can try to pinpoint how out and, and make some improvements uh, at her hip joint, back joint, or, or pelvis. I don't know exactly. Even it could come from her ankle. So why don't you stay tuned, and we'll get right to it. All right, everyone. We got uh, Stephanie out here in the hall, and. Uh, you want to wanna watch her walk, so go ahead and just walk your normal place and walk towards the camera. And for those of you who have watched uh, the high heel video, it really exposes that left side. So uh, we're going to see a little bit more next. Cross your arms here. And uh, we're going to show this a couple times. You see that the left side, it almost looks very timid to put weight. And uh, Stephanie, do you feel like it's not stable? Not like the right side. And she even kind of lost her motion as I was talking to her. Um, so I'm very <laughs> observant. She just kind of slowed down her her gait. Yeah. Just focus on that left hit uh, camera. Um, good. Just yeah. Go back right there. And she's not getting a lot of push off. Her stride length has decreased, and uh, those are the things we want to look at next. All right. So we're back from watching her walk. Um, my eyes just kept going to her hips, pelvis, definitely there's something with that increased weight as you guys might have seen. Um, so why don't we check a few functional tests I've learned from the Institute of Physical Art under my mentors. Uh, so I think these are great because we want to check out the neuromuscular response. Is there a response to this, a reflex that can happen that needs to be there to help her and, and keep her stable? If that response isn't there, this is the stuff that causes problems for you know a lot of top athletes that get injured like Kobe Bryant, Derrick Rose, and I wrote instant articles of, of all these athletes. Uh, so you can check those out on our website. Um, so why don't we take a look here? Let's see how she stacks up. Is her body's ability to stack up? Does it translate through her body? This is very important for shock absorbance. Uh, we call this the elbow flexion test. Hold this right here. And uh, don't let me move you, okay? Just hold. And the great thing about this is I can kind of see on this arm, it does go straight down to her feet. And on this side, it just, she's gonna buckle, you know? And there's no stability here. There's no base. And she can tell you that, right? What do you, what do you kind of notice? Stronger, definitely, on this side. Yeah, so something along this chain isn't working, this kinetic chain. Okay, so let's take your uh, left leg in front. Now, it's called the lumbar protective mechanism. So I'm going to stay right here. Don't let me move you. And I don't feel a lot of weight going in, and I can just push her over pretty easily. I can probably even use one finger, and she's not even doing anything. But let's switch legs. 
So she wants to walk forward. You know, we call that a meaningful task. A meaningful task is a is, is something that's important to the person. Uh, so we want to consider patient goals, patient uh, thought process. So we want to get her a little bit more stable so she doesn't trip over herself while walking through the UCI campus. So, all right. So that actually looks a lot more stable. I don't know if you let, let's show you again. So right here. Boom, she hits the ground and I'm like 200 pounds and she's doing a pretty good job resisting me. Um, so, you know, these are these are things that we're looking for. We wanna make sure that performance, that neuromuscular performance is there and the ability to, to keep her stable. Another one I like to see is uh, just a little mini squat. Um, um, that kind of, you know, we wanna look for this as more of a knee tracking kind of thing. I'll come down here. Um, go ahead and do a little mini squat down here. That's good enough. Yep, and then you can kind of see in a perfect world, uh, the first and second, uh, toe is where you want to track. The middle of your kneecap is where that should go. And you can tell there's nothing here. There's nothing here. First and second toe. But on this leg, she's doing great. First and second toe here. You know, it goes right over. So, you know, if it's early on, which is, is early on, it also kind of clues me in on her hip. Um, so we want to take a look at that. So, you know, my gut says, you know, let's go here and let's help keep get that a little bit more stable. Um, but let's go take her in a meaningful task position. This I learned through the integrated systems model from Diane Lee. Thank you very much. Um, put that right over there. And one of the big things with with gait is uh, is weight shifting. Is able to translate. So I want to show you guys what what this looks like for her. Just go ahead, just go from the back leg to the front leg, and then let's do that again. Like, I want you guys to see if there's a, a difference, um, a marked you know difference. Go ahead and switch legs. So, and you can tell that's different. She's just, now she's be able to put her pelvis on top of the hip, on top of the ankle, and that's just, it just feels different, right? And then on this side, let's watch this again. Let's see if we can make changes there. And like I said, I have a couple places marked out because of these functional tests that make our assessment quicker. So, and just, yeah, it just, she's comes towards me a little bit and then kind of tracks back in. Uh, like it's hard to see on ca camera, but. A lot of pressure on like, my knee and then yeah, like, like, foot. yeah, like your knee. So I don't know what, which one it is that we need to address. It could be the knee helping the hip or the hip helping the knee or, or whatnot. But she's got something going on, and especially the subjective history of, of where you were when, you, when this happened. We gotta see how, what happened, what could have been locked up. Um, so let's do this again. Um, and so I'm gonna generally start the pelvis. That's a good place to start. I'm gonna derotate her. Right now, you guys, it's hard to see, but she's rotated to the right. I'm gonna take her to the left, and let's see if that helps her performance here. Does that make any change? How much change from percentage-wise? Zero percent? One hundred percent? Seventy-five, eighty. Okay, seventy-five, eighty. That's a good sign. So why don't we change it up a little bit? Okay, and I'm gonna have you squat. I'm gonna de I'm gonna try to put her hip on axis just quickly. So I'm, is it okay if I put my hand here? All right, I'm gonna just bolster that a little bit, kind of sink her hip in. Find that little nice groove to set her up, come back up. Just march in place quickly. Let's kind of reset her pelvis. Okay, good. good. Let's go here and let's go ahead and do that. And that's just, it's not, I'm not fixing her right now. I'm just holding a correction. Good. How's that feel? About 50-60%. 50-60%? Okay. 50-60%. Um, let's go down a little further. Why don't we help her knee a little bit? So I can de-weight. Go ahead and weight shift over here. Yeah. And then just de wait, uh, wait shift to the other side. I'm just gonna throw her knee on top of uh, of the, the shin bone. Okay, let's try that. Does that make any change? That looks actually yes. quite different. What does that feel like? Probably 80. 80%, 80%, so that's so far the best one. Um, let's just travel up up the ladder just in case. So check out rib cage, because I, I noticed that going. So 80% at her knee, that might be somewhere I wanna go, um, but let's. That's a good source. We want to go right to the source. We don't want to, we want to make it comprehensive. Good. All right, let's try that. And that looks better too. Which one is this one? 70, probably. 70, okay. March in place. Here, good. And then try that again. Let's see if that reset It's different. How's that? Really? So like 70, 75. Maybe. Okay, so we're, we're getting closer to things that are, are changing. So that's where I want to start taking it next, you know. We can do a hip, we can look at thorax, we can look at the knee. So, you know, we're trying to funnel it down, make it quick and easy. So we're gonna get around the treatment table and show you what we're gonna do to get all these things better. 
So this is all candid. I don't know where this is gonna go. So I have a, I have a good idea, you know, kind of where I want to look. So we'll see if we can make some results. And obviously, for good results, it's gonna be on YouTube. So if it's not, it's staying in the in the cash. So why don't we take a look here? I didn't have a chance to take a look at her ankle, but this is a great way. I call this uh, shock absorbance because the foot hits the ground, and you can see it kind of rotates in. And then over here, it goes straight to her neck. That's good. Um, we also learned oscillations, so uh, we give oscillation credit to uh, Milton Traeger, Dr. Milton Traeger. There we go. And you see that just nice waves. Over here, it gets stuck here. So, you know, hip helps, here helps. You know, all these different tests, they help me kind of streamline and I'm getting more of one versus the other. So, why don't we take a look at the hip here first. And we'll see if the thorax did help the hip. It's very stiff here. And then over here, soft. Can you tell the difference? All right. So why don't we hold this here, and like I said, I noticed a little thorax thing, and so we want to take it a holistic approach because she slept funny, and that's kind of the clue here. Um, and that seems to soften that a little bit too. As I let go, you can kind of see, as I let go, you know, boom, that starts getting tighter again. But let's see if the knee helped, because um, that seemed to help too. So why don't I take your knee here, so this is what it feels like, hard, a little like, you know, not a springy kind of feel. So why don't I take this, get a little bit here and here. And I'm feeling that'll help too. All right. So, you know, I would, if I were to take a bridge, I'm going to go here. I have a feeling if I just push down a little bit that her quads are just really tight and it could be a symptom, may not be the cause, but um, there's a couple places when I want to hit up. So why don't we just get some oscillations in here and we want to free this up a little bit. use uh, my handy little plunger here that we have. I learned this from the Institute of Physical Art as well. It's a, a negative pressure kind of thing. It's not positive pressure, so it's not like cupping, but you know, it does reduce tone, um, guarding, unconscious guarding. That's what we really want to get after, so let's just kind of do that. You know, some great stuff here. One of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. And we can have her resist. Okay, go ahead and resist out a little bit towards me. Yeah, and she can feel this thing pulling away. Okay, relax. Try it again. Great. This is some of this stuff. You know, knee, the bottom, the top of the knee is your, the same as the, the same bone, it's the femur. So, you know, why not address this? Just help get the patient out of discomfort, improve performance, like gait or sitting. Yeah, good, 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 good. Put that over there. And that's a lot better to see. Does it oscillate up more? Yeah, good, good. Let's see if this is softer. And it's already softer. Let's see if her her um, thorax changed a little bit. And it still hasn't. So I have a feeling, you know, that's also important. But we want to check some other performance things um, as well. Since walking requires the hip to, to move, um, I'm also checking to see if there's anything blocked. And there is something blocked right here. Um, in, in, you know, right here in the front of her pelvis, uh, called probably the pubic symphysis. You want to see a difference? Check out this side. I have a feeling this side can just fold over nicely, right? Painless, no resistance, no, you know, no impedance. Um, let's see what happens if I hold here, okay? And, uh, actually, I'm going to have you help me hold here. And then just take that here, take that here. Good. Let's ro rotate that because this is going to make me go for the next piece of the puzzle. So here, and that feels like night and day. <laughs> I don't even have to, sometimes I would have gone straight there thinking it's a pelvis reason, but, so let me tell you a little bit more about what this is that she's, she's feeling. It's a little bit of her diaphragm. And diaphragm being twisted, the diaphragm, if you look at the, the structures here, Stephanie, is uh, there's three holes, three apertures. One's uh, your vein and cava. One up here is uh, kind of where your, your stomach goes through stomach. Um, tubes and esophagus and then over here is your aorta so that's a lot of tension right here um, and then the top is actually right here so I'm gonna put the pressure right here and you know we treat things a little differently here it's a, a multifaceted approach as you know and we have six points we want to want to improve on and six one of these is your internal mobility and so let's go here and what I'm gonna have you do here is just just kind of take some light 
breaths. It's really tight right in here. Um, and just go ahead and I'm gonna hold these two ends and try to get this thing to release a little bit and get that thorax to release a little bit. Good. And now it's starting to move, softening. That's great. Good. Inhale just a little bit here. Ah, oh, better. Good. Make some changes today. You know, and this is how quick it can be. You know, some some places you just go, you know, six, 18 times. It's still the same thing. They're still doing the same thing, but it needs to change. Your program needs to change if you're you're out there and trying to find someone that, that can do this stuff, um, or you know, fly in like some some patients have. this tone. Inhale now. Good. And then and this is a little bit more relaxed. A little bit here. And then I feel a little bit of pressure here. So, you know. Good. Maybe she was talking too loud and then got, got this uh, diaphragm um, going on. Put in a little spasm here. So right here, I'm just holding an anchor at the top here. Right here. Good. Good. Inhale here. Ah, very nice. Let's see if that does it. The trick here. And that's starting to feel a whole lot different already, right? And she could feel the, the, the pain. Now we have to understand why there, there might be some numbness tingling. So why don't we go back to the hip joint. Um, I clean some things up so I could, it makes my job easier when I actually get back to the hip joint. You saw I kind of encompassed above, a little bit below. It's like uh, it's like a bridge, you know, a bridge that collapses. We want to go after the, the very thing last um you know want to surround and scaffold the the edges and then the last part of the bridge that usually if, if it collapses is the one that you know you you put in after everything else is stable so i wanted this stable i wanted that stable and then so it kind of gave me a little rubric but you can see just performance wise um do you feel that block anymore yeah it made my job easy i didn't have to work so hard um and that's a great thing so why does she feel here, this pressure? I have a feeling because it twisted, it took everything on the inside and twisted, made things short on the inside. That internal mobility so important that affected her external mobility of the quads having to work, her shins probably having to work harder than they needed to, um, and her hip flexors, because um, things were getting caught. So right here, I feel a little something here, and I'm just gonna have you do a little bit of heel slides here. It should move, it should move. For those of you men, uh, middle-aged men and even middle-aged women that sit all the time, you might start getting developing a hernia. And this is the ilioinguinal ligament, um, and so that's really important um, to free up. And and so this can get caught. This is called the femoral triangle. There's a nerve, arteries, and veins that go through here, and it can cause some things, especially when they're compressed. And there we go, just freed up nicely. Good. Yep. There we go. So. I want to see how that is. How's it doing right now? Yeah, better, right? And we want to see if we're on the right page, but I want to make sure she kept the gain. So we do that neuromuscular re-education really to get this here. So this is a PNF technique. I'll also learn from the Institute of Physical Art. Hold right here. Don't let me move you. And you see, it's just she doesn't have any awareness to this side. You know, does she have a back thing going on? I'm going to check that later, but um, no connection. Let's go to the other side. I want you to see a difference. And uh, it's gonna be a very a lot different hold right here, and then she's doing a pretty good job. And I'm, you know, I can't even move her. So, you know, over here is probably just two fingers, and she can't even hold this. You know, why don't we take a look? And she she knows what's coming. You know, I do one finger, and she just can't hold this, right? Let alone the whole hand. So, why don't we re-educate this? And re-education is that little glue that keeps everything together. It's that connection. So, let's hold it. Don't let me move. gonna shake. Shaking is a good thing. People give up when they're shaking, but you have to go through some of the shaking. That's good. And she's shaking. It's not me shaking, she's shaking. Right? She's trying to find that deeper connection, that deeper glue. Hold right there. Now starting to come in a little bit more. Okay? Good. Good, 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 good. You want to fill these little facets, these little core muscles, and there's a bunch of core muscles. Pelvic floor, diaphragm, Quadratus lumborum, deep fibers, deep fibers of the psoas muscles, and then your transverse abdominis. People only focus on one thing a lot of times, just that transverse pulling in, drawing your, your, your navel. That's not going to cut it because if you look at the core, and I've learned this, I took a lecture with uh, Dr. Mary Masary. It was fantastic. It was uh, about the core being a cylinder or a 
can. Top of the can, diaphragm, bottom of the can, pelvic floor, and the walls are actually the transverse abdominis. So now she's starting to kick in this nicely. And look at that, you know, what was that? A minute, minute and a half? She got it back, because I know she's a good athlete, you know, and she hasn't had this pain that long. But those of you who've had pain for a long time and don't get it addressed, it takes a lot longer. But take a look here, hold, you know, look at that. Right here, how do you feel? Do you feel more connected? There we go. So why don't we take it through range here. Hold right here. Don't let me hold it here. And hold. So she's got that nice thing. I'm going to take her through this PNF range, flexion, adduction. Go ahead and pull it up here. Very nice. Just meet my resistance here and pull it up. Good. We're trying to bring that connection more. The more she's connected, the more she owns this. Pull it up. Good. Good. There's our combination of isotonics here. Good. Pull. Yep. Very nice. Good. Pull. Good, now you're gonna claw your foot, push down here, and push, and this is not rehearsed, obviously, because she doesn't even know where I'm going with this. Good, and push, good, now we're gonna reverse it. Pull up, good, and push down, claw your toes, good. Pull up, good, claw your toes, good. Pull up, good, and claw your toes. Those of you physical therapists, <laughs> go learn from the Kaiser Vallejo, because this is the camp that I learned from. So, good stuff, good stuff. Pull it up, pull it up. Yeah, there you go. Take a little break. Good, I'm getting a sweat here. That's good. This is what we like. Patients like to see this. They're working hard, and look at that. It's just so much more mobility. But, she did say something about some numbness tingling. I do want to know, you know, does she have a back thing going on? So we want to address that and you know, what is this, 15, 20 minutes so far? <laughs> Doesn't happen so quickly on everybody, but um, I'm just going to take you up here. Is it okay if I put my hands through your stomach? I tell people this is the front of your back, you know, and you want to slide over towards me just a little bit. It's the front of your back. So I could have spent time just kind of working on her hip and sure she would have felt good maybe for a second, but I wanted to encompass and make it comprehensive. So, you know, we really want to get this thing checked out. And, you know, I have a feeling. All this is just things being locked up. No problems here. She folds nicely right over here. But I do feel some more internal mobility stuff. That's kind of her bladder. I don't know. Did you notice after this injury you were going to the bathroom more frequently? Um, I've noticed it for a long time, actually. Oh, <laughs> so this could have been on, on the men, you know, and, and, and developing over time. So I'm going to have you just go side to side. And, uh, you know, I'm not pushing very hard. You know, you don't want to injure any structures for those trying to do this on themselves at home. So don't do this on yourself at home. <laughs> Find a visceral therapist. Uh, the Baral Institute does a very good job. And uh, so does the IPA. They teach some interesting things. And uh, interesting, um, you know, we want to be soft. We don't want to hurt people. So, you know, my, my job is not to flare you up, um, Stephanie. So. And you've seen me do this thousands of times, so I want to free that up a little bit. And she's feeling it right now. I'm just following the, the little move mobility here and see if we can make some good changes here. Good. See right there? And that looks pretty good. Let's retest though. Let's make sure all this stuff's good here. Hold right here. Don't let me move you. Hold. Very nice. Drop this leg. Hold. You know? And so it's a little bit shut off again. So it's very, you know, glitchy. So this becomes her exercise here. Go ahead and go ahead and give me your hand. We can give you your opposite hand. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and push up towards the ceiling. Yeah, and I say enough pressure to bend the fly's knees. Not hard, more up versus down. Yeah, if you feel your hip flexor, you're doing too hard, you should feel it right in your core. Start building that up. Slow and low, enough pressure to bend the fly's knees. Not a lot, right? So and that's what you wanna do. You wanna feel this rooting, you should feel your hip setting uh, a little bit. Good. There she goes. So let's kick back in. Slowly let me win. And back up. Let me win. And back up. Good. So we're going to get her up right now. Why don't you take a look and so go ahead and stand up. All right. So we just got her up um, and uh, we want to see how performance changes, dynamic performance changes. So let's go see that weight shift. Wow. You guys can tell I'm not you know, putting on my hands here anymore. Uh, this wasn't rehearsed, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, take a look. Go ahead and stand on that one right leg now. Uh, oh, left leg, sorry. Oh. Yeah. Stand yeah. on yeah. it? Yeah. Feel. How does that feel? And I would recommend that exercise for you to do at home. But, um, yeah. How about, um, I know this didn't really address uh, your squatting, but, but let's do the knee bends again. Let's see if those are any changes. So why don't we face the camera here? Um, right over here? Yeah. Let's do some knee bends. 
Wow, take a look. There's a track over her first and the second toe. That's some great stuff. Good. And that looks night and day different. That's gonna save her knee from a lot of a lot of pain here. And there's a rib cage on, on track. Good. It's doing really well. Okay, so let's check out your other functions. Let's try another functional test. Let's see if she just performs better here. And that's what we want. We want you to perform better. Go out, leave this room and, and not hurt yourself. And this is like day different. Jeez. <laughs> you know, I'm putting significant <laughs> weight down, down through her. Um, let's put your left leg forward. And this one was just non-responsive, so that's the only one I care to see. Hold here, don't let me move you. Boy, that's a, a lot more connection, you know, and she can feel that. Now I finally moved her. She's not buckling at that spot. Why don't we show the, the public here a little bit more, see if she's buckling at that spot. Did she have a low back pain issue? Probably. Did she have a pelvic pain issue? Probably. Did she have a hip instability issue? Probably. But you see how we kind of encompass that. Go ahead and do that here. Yeah. 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 Just show the public here. Yeah. Just put this under. You know, we could go after back pain, that's addressing symptoms. We can go after hip pain, that's addressing symptoms. But I wanted to hit them all. Um, I want you guys to all see that here. So hold, and that's just night and day different. Good. There, just responsive, just responsive. We're gonna watch her gait again. So we're gonna come out there. Yeah. Go ahead, let's check it out. Wow, just more streamlined. Let's go moving forward. Is that what you feel, Steph? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna cross your arms, go slower. We can zoom in on her left hip. Does it look a lot more stable? Is she drifting forward? No wasted energy going side to side. She could propel her stride lengths longer. This is some great stuff. I think we'll have her put on some heels and you guys could go back and look at some before and we'll see if that changes outside. All right, Stephanie, that was pretty neat out with the high heels and gait change, like that was, that was pretty cool. Um, so why don't you, why don't you tell uh, everyone just how, how's everything feeling right now? A lot more stable, like I feel like I'm more in tune with my left side. I think before I was really disconnected, so I couldn't really control like how my leg was going when I was walking or just how it was moving and like everything was working. Yeah, and you could tell. It's just you're more streamlined. You're moving mm -hmm. uh, more forward, and uh, you know I thought that was great. Uh, I think that's an exercise you need to do. Uh, something happened. I think the the cause was a little bit of a twist in your your thorax. You probably you know was looking for a position of comfort when you slept, and then found yourself in a rotation. And you're breathing and uh, constricting your your diaphragm in a different way, and then I think everything's just kind of twisted and then you felt some nerve pain uh, and some little impingement there so um, try that exercise uh, for sure but um, I think you can see the importance of that neuromuscular connection so you know I want you to really think about that as well as you as you go on and be a PT so uh, yeah thanks for for coming in and um, yeah thanks for for everyone for joining us on this session uh, like I said super candid I know we had props and everything all <laughs> over the place so so please you know forgive us um, if you like what we're doing here uh, please subscribe uh, and also throw a like and if you have any comments about this video or any other video please feel free so I'm Dr. Lin of Rehab and Body Physical Therapy and this is Stephanie uh, remember we can and we will get better together.